Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, 3-in-1 tree guard paint. And in this video, we're going to be discussing um, tomato care. This is about a month since we've had these plants down here installed. And um, in this video, we're going to be discussing what steps to be taking now that it's been about a month established. The plants are a little over a foot tall, um, and we want to make sure that they continue off to a great start and into fruit production. Um, the first thing I want to show you um, before we get into this video is I want to show you how much life is actually here in this garden. If you come down and take a look at some of these lower leaves down here, you'll actually see right over there, and it's actually um, eating um, some of the lower leaves on this tomato plant is a pill bug, also known as the roly-poly. Um, and then if we take a look over here, up above, you can actually see I've got this compost pile, which um, is actually right between my Oro Blanco grapefruit tree as well as my um, bears, also known as a Persian lime tree. And what I'm doing here is I've actually got my compost pile, all of the leftover organic material in my garden actually um, pile on. Um, there's onions in there and Swiss chard and um, some nasturtium flower you can see up above with that yellow flower um, that's, that's peeking its head out over the top. Um, that's coming into bloom this morning. But what I want to show you here is take a look at the life that's actually in this pile. Over here is a slug. Um, as we know, this can be damaging to your um, to your newly installed plants. If you take a look over here, there's some more pill bugs, roly polies, another one over here. And what's happening is they're eating all of this organic material. And every time we go to watering, is it's actually enriching the soil and improving the um, the quality of the soil. There's plenty of earthworms under there as well. Um, tunneling, aerating the soil, um, and enriching the soil throughout. Um, so the first step we're going to do is um, we're going to take a look at this tomato over here. This is the San Marzano um, tomato variety. This one over here is a Roma variety. This one here is another Roma variety. Um, and then this here are my early girl um, tomatoes that we planted actually in early March, whereas this here was mid-April. Um, so you can see the big difference in growth and, and, and what's actually happening here in this garden. And it looks like we're going to have actually our first tomato um, within the upcoming week. This tomato, and you can see the other videos where we actually showed how we actually trained this as a, um, as a two stem. It's a two stem tomato. So we've actually grown it to actually have two stems instead of a tomato bush. And we're going to actually start training all of these to do exactly the same thing. The first tomato plant here in this um, area is going to be a two-stem tomato as well. Um, this Roma tomato will be a two-stem tomato. And this Roma, being that it's got very limited space, we're going to grow as a one-stem tomato. So the first step we're going to do over here, and let me move these out of the way, is we're actually going to um, design this and select what are going to be the two stems that we're going to then use um, to support our tomatoes. So all of these additional buds, if you zoom in over here, we'll start off with the small ones and work our way down. But this here is a little offshoot that's coming off. You can actually simply pinch this off and recycle it, put it right back on top of the soil. We find another bud back here, and we can pinch that off and remove it. As we go a little deeper, I'm gonna start thinning this out, and you can see what this looks like very quickly. That comes out, that's gonna come out, that's gonna come out, this is gonna come out, and one more stem in the back. Now they're in the back. And now we've actually got our two stem tomato. What we're gonna do next is support it with some twine. So we're basically gonna take some twine here, tie it to the bamboo stake. As you can see, these bamboo stakes are supported by metal poles that are covered in this green vinyl plastic. Um, originally, when I first designed this, it was all bamboo. That just wasn't strong enough to support these heavy tomato plants when they actually go in the fruit bearing. Um, so if we take a look here, it's gonna tie that on nice and loose, and that's gonna support this vine and steer it in that direction. We'll clean up the extra part of the tie, and then we're gonna repeat it for the second stem. And again, we just tie that onto the bamboo. And loosely support the plant. And that I'm pulling it away so that that vine can go, grow in that direction. This vine will grow away and give it space so that it can get its own light 
and not overcrowd it. The benefit of actually growing your tomatoes vertically is that it allows a lot of air to come and circulate around the plant, around the fruits, um, and basically makes for a much healthier plant than if it was a crowded bush um, that can, you know, harvest a lot of diseases, viruses, um, molds, um, and basically rot your tomato plant when it's actually too crowded. This here is going to give us the highest production as you're going to watch and see throughout the growing season. The next step is, it's been about a month now since these plants have been installed, you know, installed, and the goal now is to feed them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, let me remove all of these additional stems. We could leave this on top of the soil, but to keep the this work area clear for this video, I'm actually moving them. These extra ties will be removed. So the next thing, we're going to fertilize it. I've got a couple of products. You always want to um, fertilize organically. We saw all of the living organisms that are in the soil, uh, and we want to continue feeding them. If we do anything with a chemical type fertilizer, um, the concern is it's not improving the soil. Something else. So the next step is we're going to now um, feed our tomato plants. It's been about 30 days since we've had them installed and um, so we're now going to have to feed the plants and it's a good idea to actually feed your plants every 30 days. Um, if the plant says it's good for three months, I would actually cut back on your feeding. I would try different um, organic fertilizers as well, just as you know, with our own bodies, it's good to get food from different sources as they have different elements that are important for healthy plants. Um, so we're going to start off with um, this product over here on this plant. I've actually brought, and actually I want to show you on the back over here. So this has an 8% um, nitrogen content, 5% phosphorus, 5% potassium. 8% um, is actually going to contribute a lot towards growing, um, which might be okay at the beginning um, of the growing season. But as we go further into the season, we're going to want probably a product more like this. And this is another product made by Job's. So let me open this here. So this here is a product made by Job's, organic vegetable and tomato food. Um, what's great about this is on the back it shows the percentage um, content is 2% nitrogen, so very low nitrogen, but very high on the phosphorus, which means more flowers, more fruit, spend less time growing now. And this is something we're gonna need as we get into the middle of the growing season. Um, and then the 4% for the um, potassium for disease resistance and, and root strength. So. We got these um, materials. Again, all of these plants are pretty much going to get all of these different organic um, products. We're just going to start off with this. According to the back, it says if your plant's about a foot tall, to feed it with four cap capfuls of soil. So we're just going to go one, and we're just scattering this around the plant, two, three, and four. And Something else I'm going to do, and I did a whole video on Epsom salts, but Epsom salts actually offer, it's a magnesium sulfate of the two ingredients that are in Epsom salt. The magnesium and both and sulfate, both of them actually contribute to greener and healthier plants. By having a healthier plant, a greener plant, it's actually more efficient in um, photosynthesis and actually making the sugars necessary for a healthy plant and most importantly for um, really good fruit production. So um, according to this, it says for tomatoes, um, to sprinkle one tablespoon per foot of height um, each month. So we're just going to take a teaspoon or a tablespoon of this product according to the directions and just sprinkle that around the base. Whatever's on the leaf we're going to wash off or shake off. So now we've got that around the base of the plant. We'll get this out of the way. The other thing I want to show, and if you can actually um, take a look over here, you'll notice there's a couple of onion plants that are right here in the corner. I've got a few that are over here. Um, these onions will become part of our salad. Once we got the tomatoes, these onions will go into the salad. But most importantly, the reason these are here um, are they're excellent companion plants for tomatoes. Um, they actually improve the soil um, organisms that are in the soil. Um, what they also do is they also help repel insects that could actually be damaging to the tomato as well. So by having um, diversification of plants around, um, your fruits and vegetables in your garden, you're actually um, creating a healthier environment for all of the plants. Um, so these onions within the next 30 to 60 days will be coming out. Your goal is not to hopefully crowd the area, plus the onions performance will go down as these plants begin to shade that area. But again, they're there just to add whatever benefit and protection it'll offer over the next few months. Um, and just to the other side, another great companion plant um, to my left is this basil plant as well. So another excellent complement for the tomatoes. Um, and we'll um, complement a lot of the dishes that we'll be using for the family. Um, so we're going to set these down. 
the next step. So we just add all those um, ingredients. I just want to shake that up into our soil over here. Go around the other side. And the last step, and some people, some people like doing this right at the beginning of planting, but I usually like my plants to get established as we saw at the very beginning of the video. There's a lot of pests um, in my garden, but I don't use anything when it comes to pest control um, unless it's mandatory. But having, having some damage to your plants is okay. Losing a few tomatoes is okay. Um, but um, the concern here is, you know, if, if, the, if the problem is so bad that you're not getting anything out of your garden or, you know, a, a significant percentage of your, of your crop is actually affected, it's only then that you know, you'd resort to organic means for um, getting the bugs off, which include the neem oil, um, and there's other products out there that are relatively safe for organic gardening. Um, so the next step we're going to do is add some wood chips. And again, the reason we're doing the wood chips now, a month later, are these plants are established. Um, Adding, adding wood chips actually in, encourages even more, um, more pests around your plants, including those roly polies, the slugs, and, and things that can actually start eating at those leaves. But those bottom leaves are less important at this point. Um, eventually, and you're going to see as these videos progress, we're going to end up starting to remove some of these leaves as these plants get more established, and you'll see why um, in these later videos. So we're just going to do that. So we're adding about an inch to two inches of compost, not of compost, of these wood chips all around the plant. The additional benefit of adding it, aside from adding this additional organic material to the soil, is that we're actually retaining now water, retaining nutrients, um, and actually keeping the soil even warmer around these tomato plants, which will encourage them to actually develop and grow even faster. So that's there, that's done. So I picked up all of these leaves, made sure none of them got buried underneath the wood chips. And this area is now done. Um, the other thing I wanna show you as this plant is behind me is getting heavier. And that's gonna to happen to some of these tomato plants as they get um, more developed. Um, if you come over a little closer, you can take a look at this bamboo stake. It's actually starting to pull down with all the weight of all of these tomatoes. Most of these other stakes are actually okay. But this one over here is actually getting pulled down. What we're gonna do, and again, because I built this on a metal frame, we're gonna take some string here. We're gonna go up and tie it like so. So what we're gonna do is just pull. Let me actually start it from here. What we're gonna do is actually pull the stake up and that'll actually support the stake, especially as it gets heavier. And these are all things that you can do when you're in the garden and caring for your tomatoes. And that's it. So we're done. That um, bamboo stake is now um, is relatively straight. Another important thing to take a look at, you can see there's another shoot coming off the side. This here needs to come off. Another little one up here, and that's gonna come off as well. The last thing I wanna share in this video is watering. So, what I wanna share here is a sprinkler, if you take a look. I've actually tried um, a variety of different um, ways of irrigating. I've done the drip irrigations, but again, because of the importance of the li having a living soil, um, we've just fertilized it. If we did a drip irrigation and just soaked one part of the garden, it's not actually wetting and that's actually what activates um, your organic life in your soil. Um, but if you're actually just dripping one part of your tomato plant, like let's say we're soaking this area and then soaking this area, we're not activating and enriching the entire soil which is activated only by water. So I'm going to turn on my sprinkler so you can see what this is going to look like now. So as you can see, what I've done is I've actually put this on a sprinkler spray. And what this is doing is it's actually wetting the entire zone. I've got another sprinkler over here and it's doing the same thing. So now all of the soil is getting wet. In my experience, that's actually resulted in a much healthier, um, 
you know, and much more pr um, productive um, tomato garden. I hope you found this video informative. These were all tips provided by Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. If so, be sure to like it. Most importantly, subscribe so you don't miss any of our other um, YouTube videos um, that we have to share with you. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.